Ableton Live has a number of excellent delay effects, but did you know that you can use them for a lot more than just echo? Let's explore some unexpected uses for Ableton's various delays. We'll start with something simple using the delay device, which is available in all versions of Live. You can use delay to enhance the stereo width of elements in your mix. Let's make this drum beat wider. I've already added delay to the clap channel. I'll unlink the delays and set them both to time mode. I'll set the left delay as low as possible and the right delay to 15 milliseconds. I'll also set the feedback to zero and turn off the filter section. Now, as I increase the dry wet, you'll hear the claps get wider. This is known as the Haas effect. It's a psychoacoustic phenomenon that works by splitting a signal and sending a slightly delayed version to one ear. Our ears then perceive the two sounds as coming from different directions, creating the illusion of stereo width from an otherwise mono part. This can work well on a number of different elements in your mix. However, there are a few disclaimers to bear in mind when using the effect. The biggest concern is mono compatibility. Mono compatibility and the phase issues that go along with it are a complicated subject and one that we don't have time for in this video. But essentially, we want to make sure that our mix sounds as close as possible to the stereo version if it's ever played back in mono. Let's hear what I mean. You can make a stereo sound mono using Live's utility device. At the moment, this doesn't sound so bad when summed to mono, but listen to what happens when I set the right delay to a smaller amount. Notice how the sound of the clap has completely fallen apart. It's got an odd ringing and has lost a lot of its attack. It only barely sounds like a clap. Without getting too much into what's going on here, the best thing to do when using this technique is load utility after the delay and check your sound in mono. If you adjust the delay time while the sound is monoed, you'll be able to find a sweet spot where the sound maintains most of its original character. If the delay time is too low, you end up with odd phasing. Too high and suddenly we're hearing an audible delay. The exact sweet spot will differ depending on the sound, but once you've found it, you can disable the utility and you'll have a nice wide sound. This technique works really well in some sounds and less well in others, so be sure to experiment. There are many other ways to add stereo width to your sounds, but this is one quick and easy way that works well in certain situations. I'll include links in the description to where you can learn more about the Haas effect and mono compatibility. I'd encourage you to check them out. Let's look at another fun use for delay, using it to create tape style effects. I've loaded another delay onto these chords. The feedback is set to 0% and dry wet is at 100%. Both delays are linked, set to time mode and have a delay of one millisecond. I also want to make sure that delay is in repitch mode. This allows us to get tape style pitching effects when adjusting the delay time. This is a really fun parameter to automate, and if you've got Max for Live, you could also modulate the delay time with an LFO. You'll probably want to restrict the range a bit. I find the random waveform gives some good results. Bear in mind that this is actually still adding a small time delay to the signal, so it's best used on parts that aren't particularly timing sensitive, like pads. Staying with these chords, let's look at another effect, Live's Echo. You can use Echo to create classic modulation effects like Chorus and Flanger. The cool thing is that because of the range of controls available in Echo, 
you can get much richer and more interesting results than you might using standard chorus and flanger effects. To start, disable most of Echo's functions like the filter and any modulation or character settings. Set the feedback to zero and the dry wet to the max. Chorus and flanger effects are created by modulating the delay time. Chorus tends to occur at delay times of around 20 milliseconds, while flanging happens at much shorter delay times. Let's go with chorus first. Make sure both delays are linked and set to time mode, then set the delay time to around 20 milliseconds. Next, head over to the modulation tab and increase the delay's modulation amount to a moderate setting. Make sure that the modulating LFOs are out of phase as well, basically anything other than zero on the phase control. You can already hear some chorusing, but this is even more exaggerated when turning up the feedback. Turning the feedback too high sounds a bit weird, but settings around 60% or below sound pretty good. Now that we've got the basic chorus effect, let's start bringing in other elements from Echo to add some character. What about some reverb as part of the feedback chain? You could try ping pong mode. Or adjust the rate of the LFO for some different characters. You could bring in some wobble for more of a wonky feel. You can turn on Echo's input drive and increase the input gain to add some saturation. And even use the built-in filter to color the chorus. Flanging is achieved using fairly similar settings. We need a shorter delay time, higher feedback, much higher modulation amounts, and it tends to work best in stereo mode. Echo even includes this 4 times switch that multiplies the modulation depth by 4 for an even deeper flanging. Chorus and flanging are great tools to add depth and width to just about any sound, and we can create really colourful analogue style effects using Echo. Try adding chorusing to chords to make them sound lush and wide, or try using subtle flanging on drum tracks to add a bit of liveliness. Another cool thing we can do with Echo is create analog style loop textures. Early analog loop pedals were actually just delays with really long delay times and a high feedback, and we can set up something similar in Echo. I've loaded Echo onto a synth track I'll be using to feed the looper. For now, I'll disable the filter and any other settings like modulation or wobble. With both delays linked and in sync mode, I'll set the delay time as high as it will go. Lastly, I'll set the feedback to exactly 100%. Now, whatever I play into Echo will be captured into a loop. These notes are now captured and will repeat forever because the feedback is set to 100%. I can play new notes on each loop cycle and they'll be added to the loop. Now for the best bit. As long as Echo is in repitch mode, I can adjust the delay time and the loop will repitch itself. Halving or doubling the loop time will raise or lower the pitch of the loop by an octave. Every time you adjust the loop's rate, the pitching artifacts also subtly shift the tone of the sound. 
This is an awesome technique for creating interesting textural loops. Let's hear another example. To stop the current loop playing, simply set the feedback to 0% and the loop will die out after the next cycle. You can of course experiment with the other controls in Echo to add a more analog flavor to your loops. And the best way to capture these loops is to resample them to a new audio track. Going back to the idea I was working on before, I've used this looping technique to create a synth texture that sits underneath the main pattern. You'll also hear I've used the repitching effect to build the energy of the part in the second half of the loop by stepping it up a few octaves. There's one more fun delay trick to look at, using the grain delay as a rudimentary pitch shifter. I want to add a vocal to this beat. It sounds a bit repetitive as is, so I'll use grain delay to give it some life. First, I'll set the delay mode to time and turn it all the way down to one millisecond, so there's minimal time delay on the signal. I'll also make sure feedback is set to zero. You can set the pitch value to whatever you'd like to pitch shift by. I'll go with 12 semitones, which is an octave. The spray and frequency controls require the most adjusting to get the sound you want, as we'll see shortly, but I'll set those to moderate values for now. Now, when I increase the dry wet, you'll hear the signal being pitch shifted up an octave. Now we can explore different settings for the spray and frequency controls to adjust the tone of the effect. This is a great effect to automate. I've already set up a clip with some automation for the pitch amount and dry wet controls. The short vocal loop is already much more interesting. The pitching effects work really well on vocals, but it sounds great on all sorts of different material, so be sure to explore it on different sounds. So we've seen that Ableton Live's delays are useful for way more than simply adding delay to your sounds. I'd encourage you to explore setting these effects up for yourself, but I've also put together a series of free preset racks that give you easy access to each of the effects. I'll include a link to those in the description. Drop a comment below if you've got any questions, and head to elephant.io to watch more tutorials and download free Ableton Live packs. 
This has been Elephant. Thanks for watching. Thank you.